live from the Grand Ole Opry House in Nashville, Tennessee. It's Opry Backstage with tonight's guests, Paul Brandt, Ralph Stanley, Jim Lauderdale, Jan Howard, and Joni Harms. And now from Studio A, here's the host of tonight's show, Bill Anderson. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Well, hey, come on, folks. I grew up in Atlanta. I'm a Braves fan, and I'm wearing the Braves jacket tonight, not to irritate our friends in New York. I know the Braves and the Yankees are going to be going at it here in a little while. But my buddy Steve Warner came on here a couple of weeks ago. I was not here to defend myself, and he comes on, and he wears a New York Mets shirt, and he's talking about how bad the Mets are going to beat the Braves. And I just thought tonight... In the spirit of sportsmanship and friendship and fun, I just want to say to my buddy Steve Warner, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Paul Brandt joins us. Paul's from Canada. I guess hockey's bigger than baseball in your well, life. Well, you know, right? actually, you know, when I was uh, when I was just getting started, I used to sing at the local AAA baseball team and do the national anthems. Do both national anthems there, um, the Canadian and American national anthems. And so I had a little bit of baseball, but uh, yeah, hockey's pretty big in Canada. Did you grow up playing hockey? You know, I can skate really well, but I can't stop, and that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they so, got those boards there exactly. for. Exactly. I, I found I was running into more things than I was doing any good, so I, yeah, I, I played a lot of basketball growing up. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. I read a great quote about you the other day, and I absolutely love this. Uh, of course, you're a songwriter, and you write a lot of songs. said when you were young and you were first starting to write, you used to write songs about your dog, and you didn't have a dog. <laughs> That's right. I didn't even have a dog. I used that to must have out. been lonely songs. Yeah, they were lonely songs. I used to sit out on the front, uh, on the front porch, and, and my dad had a guitar, and, and uh, I didn't even know any chords or anything at the time. I'd just sit there and strum it and, and, uh, and make up songs about my dog. So I had an active imagination. I was going to say, that's what a songwriter needs, mm -hmm. is, is an active well, imagination. I've heard people say that you know to be a great songwriter you have to be a, a very great observer of life you watch what's going on around you and and uh, and yeah a lot of imagination kind of comes into play with that you've done extremely well up in your native country you won the uh, Canadian country music a male vocalist of the year this year you hosted the awards yeah now I know why Vince Gill's voice is so high it's because he's so stressed out about hosting award <laughs> shows all the time it, it was a lot of running around you know and, and if you're not performing you're presenting an award or trying to keep things moving and, and uh, it was exciting it was a huge honor to get the chance to do that this where do they do the show from? Um, they do it in different cities each year. I think eventually they're going to end up um, keeping it where the Canadian Country Music Hall of Fame is in Calgary, where, where I'm from. Uh, but this year it was in uh, our nation's capital in Ottawa. And uh, it was, a, it, like I said, a huge honor. Well, that's terrific. You hosted it and then won the award, so yeah. you can you can play Vince I got, Gill. I got to present double. myself the award. You know? <laughs> like Vince does. <laughs> yeah, there, right. You? You've also been to Bosnia with uh, Claudia Church. Tell me a little bit about that. That trip. was amazing. We just had an incredible time, and uh, it was exciting to have Claudia over there. I think that she just did a, a great job. Of course, you know, she's such a, a beautiful lady. She really didn't even, even though she sings great, she didn't even have to sing. I mean, she walked out <laughs> on stage, and those soldiers were pretty impressed. I was going to say, how know? did you follow that? Uh, well, it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough, but um, yeah, it was very uh, inspiring to see what those men and women were doing over there and you know we'd heard so many terrible things about you know I mean war is an awful thing but um, we heard so many different views on whether we should be there or not and, and when I got there and saw those men and women and the, the hard work they were doing in bringing peace and, and freedom and democracy into that country, um, it really would have made you proud to see it. It was wonderful. Are there Canadian forces over there? There were some Canadian forces over there, and, and uh, um, I primarily played for uh, um, the, the American uh, um, people that were over there, and, and uh, it, was, it was exciting to be able to bring a little piece of home to them. You I'm know, sure. A lot of them were over there for sometimes up to a year and not seeing their families, and to, to be able to play songs like My Heart Has a History, and, and I do, and see them singing along and yeah. even wiping a tear away every once in a while, you know, it was, uh, it was a pretty special time. You got a couple of records out. You got uh, the new CD of, of your own there called That's the Truth, and you got a Christmas CD. Yeah, yeah. this is my, my first Christmas album, and uh, it was exciting to, to get into the studio and do this. I, I recorded it in, in uh, January and February, so there was still a little bit of the Christmas spirit left yeah. in the air, and, and um, it has songs like, you know, like Jingle Bells and, and uh, um, you know, the old Buck Owens tune, Santa Looks a Lot Like Daddy. Mm -hmm. I did that with Terry Clark. And uh, Alison Krauss's band, Union Station, came in and played on a couple of the cuts, and I've got a couple originals on there. So there's a little bit of something for everybody. Great. Well, it's called a Paul Brandt Christmas. The other one's Paul Brandt, and that's the truth. Got to ask you this. No, I don't. No, we're not going. I, 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 I thought you were going to shake my hand. Oh, good, no, I, I want to ask you a question. 
your manager, or your manager for a long oh, time, yeah. Pete Fisher, is now the new general manager of the Grand Ole Opry. Does this right. mean we're going to see more of Paul Brandt at the Opry? Well, I hope so. I've, I've, I've really enjoyed my trips to the Opry. I think this is about the fifth time that I've been here now. Oh, boy, and, and you got a big hand out there last night. Oh, that was a lot of fun. And yeah. then we went and did the uh, the after show over at WSM AM and, and, and got the chance to, to play right up until midnight, just picking and oh, grinning wow. and having a good time. But, uh, yeah, I, I wish Pete all the best over here. I think that, uh, you know, from what I've heard, he's doing a great job. You lost a manager and we I gained did. one. Well, I, Paul, always great to have you at the Opry. Thank you very much. hearing you tonight on Grand Ole Opry Live at the bottom of the hour, Paul Brandt. Well, there's a new movie out in the theaters that's guaranteed to make you absolutely laugh out loud. In fact, it's got a happy title. It's called Happy Texas. And you're going to hear some of your country favorites on the movie soundtrack. Tammy Orinder tells us all about it. Watch. Girls are waiting. Head to girls. The new movie, Happy Texas, is anything but happy for the stars of the film. But this comedy is putting a smile on the faces of the folks at Arista Records. Most of the soundtrack comes from the Arista roster. So with the big Nashville connection, there's a special premiere in Nashville. For newcomers like Brad Paisley, having a song in a movie is an interesting item on your resume. Uh, it's not something that you grow up dreaming about. I mean, you know, it's funny, as a singer, you think of things like the Opry and making an album and doing shows. I don't think there's any singer out there whose main goal is to have a song on a, on a movie soundtrack, but then when it happens, it, it's really neat. During the premiere in Nashville, Randy Scruggs was joined on stage by rocker Joan Osborne, country star Leroy Parnell, and crossover legend Delbert McClinton. Scruggs' song in the movie is a duet with Osborne, a song they recorded two years ago. Hey, it was a song I, I co-wrote with Johnny Cash, so we had discussed doing something together, then all of a sudden the song sort of emerged, and that became the vehicle to get together. Parnell wrote a song specifically for Happy Texas, but he says his highlight of the premiere is the fact that legend Earl Scruggs is in the audience. I just love seeing the guys that blazed the trail in Nashville uh, being recognized, you know, and it doesn't happen enough. And to help finish out this soundtrack, a whole line of country entertainers made contributions from Pam Tillis and Allison Krauss to BR549 and Emmy Lou Harris, giving this big screen project a small town country feel like that of Happy Texas. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I tell you what, if you want Happy Nashville, we got it right here at the Grand Ole Opry tonight. We've already visited with Paul Brandt. And coming up after the break, Dr. Ralph Stanley, patriarch of bluegrass music, great and talented songwriter Jim Lauderdale will be here. My buddy Jan Howard and a lovely lady who's living out the cowgirl's dream, Joni Harms. Great show when Opry Backstage continues. And so don't you go away. Well, I'm visiting with a couple of special folks here tonight, Dr. Ralph Stanley and uh, my friend Jim Lauderdale, great songwriter. And I'm holding in my hand the album, the CD, called Clinch Mountain Country with uh, Ralph Stanley and friends. It won two big awards this week at the Bluegrass Awards. Congratulations to you. Well, thank you, Bill. I'm really, really proud of it. I've seen that one like for uh, the event record. We a recorded event and, uh, of the year and the album of the year. Well, congratulations to you, and I think your buddy you. Jim sings on the, one of the cuts, doesn't he? Jim Lauderdale sung on one of the cuts. Done a fine job. Well, i got to tell you something. I've never told you this before, but last Christmas, I really wanted this album. I asked Santa Claus to put that in my stocking, and I got one. You did? I guess I was a good boy. Well, I'm sure <laughs> glad you did. I'm sure well, glad you did. Well, congratulations. Did you enjoy it, Bill? Oh, yeah, love it. Oh, well, I love bluegrass music. I, know, I, mean, I, know you I, do. I cut my teeth on that kind of music. I know you do. Appreciate yeah. it. Somebody told me the other day, I was visiting with somebody that had been up to Louisville, I think is where the awards were, yes. and they sat in the hallways of the hotels up there and, and in all the little surrounding areas, people were picking and singing shade tree kind of music, just bluegrass music everywhere, yeah. and they said that they were just amazed at how young some of the players are. That's the truth. They're from that high on up. You'd, you'd be surprised at the... I mean, the real young kids, the size of another little fella you'll see in a minute, uh, picking, picking just like old bits. Where do they learn it at that age? 
I guess they learn it from, I don't know, probably from some of the older people, but they can learn so much quicker, you know, than us old folks. Well, they, <laughs> they've got something to go by. <laughs> well, that's true. That's yeah, right. They've, right. Got, they've got you to, to copy yeah, and that kind of thing. Somebody to go by. I don't know if you know this. I've been mad at Jim Lauderdale for about two years. You have? He recorded an album called Whisper. Yeah. That's my title. <laughs> well, you got a right to be mad after all. <laughs> he stole from me, didn't yeah, he? he I, I came on here to apologize. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bill, oh, I'm sorry. Go away. I'm only bugging you. <laughs> you were excited last night. This was your first weekend on the Grand Ole yes, Opry. I've been waiting for so long. And uh, to be on with Ralph Stanley, I'll tell you, I just, it, it couldn't have worked out better, and it's been worth the wait. Well, now, Thank you guys you. have got your own duet album out, which uh, Jim Lauderdale and, and Ralph Stanley called uh, I Feel Like Singing Today. H how did you guys get together? We uh, actually, I'd been following Ralph for years, but we did a show uh, a few years ago on TNN, Ricky Skaggs at the Ryman, and I asked him if he'd, uh, if I could write a song for him to be on the Whisper album, and uh, so he and the Clinch Mountain Boys were on that, and then he asked me to sing on the Clinch Mountain Country record and then I as time went by I got enough courage to ask him to do a whole record with me and so I wrote a bunch of tunes and we did a bunch mm -hmm. of old Stanley Brothers songs and well went. you're a terrific songwriter thank you you've had a lot of big hit songs uh... it's going great I've got a song right now I wrote with mm -hmm. Melba Montgomery that George Strait's got it's doing real good it's called what do you say to that oh yeah and I got a new album out that just came out on RCA, too. I think we've got a copy of that over here. Remind me of the title it's of this. It's called Onward Through It All. Yeah. Well, much good luck Thanks. with that. you got a special guest you brought with you, don't you, yeah, Doctor? Yeah, I've got a little uh, special guest here. He goes, uh, on, he has to go everywhere I go. Come on in here. And this is my grandson, and he was on this uh, show with me <clears throat> once before. I think so. What's your yeah. first name? Nathan. Nathan. And how old are you, Nathan? Seven. Seven years old. Ma, are you married? <laughs> I just thought I... Now, what's that you got in your hand? Spoons. Some spoons. You play the spoons? Let me hear a little bit of it. Hit him a lick Can, can you do a Is that the newest bluegrass instrument, the spoons? Yeah, and he hits every lick. <laughs> I tell you what, sounds like he's got natural rhythm. Oh, he's natural. Yeah? Yeah. So is that what you want to do when you grow up? You want to be in the music business like Grandpa? Do you play any other instruments? Or are you learning? Learning. Are you really learning to play? Tell him. Banjo. Should have known, huh? You sing? You like to sing? Why? He sings as little as me already. Just carrying that family tradition oh, on? Oh, yeah. That's amazing. My son, you know, sings lead for me, and I, that's three generations on the stage. Goodness gracious. And you're going to be out there with Grandpa tonight? Yeah, I cannot true. wait to watch that. Play watch him, Jim. You ain't never supposed to follow a kid on I, the stage. You know, that, that W.C. <laughs> Fields expression doesn't apply to him. He's a great kid. <laughs> I love being around him. Uh, it's great to have both of you guys here tonight on the Grand Ole Opry. Dr. Ralph Stanley, my buddy Jim Thank Lauderdale. we still got to get together I know it. sometime. Nathan? Break a leg, pal. You know what that means? Break a leg means go out there and have good luck. Say thank we'll you. We'll all be pulling for you. All Say right. Thank nice you, to have you here. All right. Also, we want to congratulate Grand Ole Opry member Ricky Skaggs, along with his great band Kentucky Thunder, because they took away the Instrumental Group Award up at the uh, IBMA Awards in Louisville. Those boys can sure pick. We're awful proud of them here at the Grand Ole Opry. And we want to remind you that if you'd like a copy of uh, Ralph Stanley's Clinch Mountain Country, the newest IBMA recorded event and album of the year winner, then check out the music store on country.com, which is your personal source for for all things country. Stay with us coming up next on Opry Backstage. We're going to see what Roxanne has to say on Opry Notes and lots more of your favorites. We'll be back. Our show's called Opry Backstage. We're live in Nashville. I'm Bill Anderson. I want to mention real quick that tomorrow, along with Ray Price, Connie Smith, David, and Alan Frizzell, we're going to have a big show down in Corsicana, Texas, which was the late and great Lefty Frizzell's hometown. It's Lefty Frizzell Day tomorrow in Corsicana, Texas, and we're looking forward to seeing a lot of our friends down that way. Well, last Saturday night was a very special night here at the Grand Ole Opry. In case you weren't tuned in, it was the 74th birthday celebration of the Grand Ole Opry. Roxanne Russell recaps the the highlights in this week's Opry Note. Let's watch. Presenting the Grand Ole Opry. Let her go, boys. We're glad y'all are here with us this evening, and we're going to get going right now. Here we go. Grand Ole Opry star Lori Morgan kicked off a night to remember last weekend as Opry family and friends graced the venerable stage in honor of the Grand Ole Opry's 74th anniversary celebration. And they knew all of the reasons I was coming. 
coming round, round, round. Because of his love for this grand old institution, Marty Stewart's been coming round the Opry for years, so it was only right that Marty co-host this historic occasion. Marty says there's no place quite like the grand old Opry. The thing I love about coming to the Opry is you never know who's going to be in the dressing room with you. It's like you never know. And Miss Will Molly Cooper is somebody I've, I've admired for so many years. She really has a pure, authentic mountain sound. And we were in the same dressing room the last time I played at the Opry. I said, do you remember that old mountain song called Pretty Polly? She said, yes. And then she picked up her guitar and she sang it. And I was just playing the mandolin. I said, that sounds really good. I said, can I make a date with you on the stage of the Opry? Oh, Polly, Pretty Polly, come go along with me. You never know who will share that stage of the Grand Ole Opry. It's just the magic of it. You know, it's a really a family that way. And that's what I, that's what I plug it. That's the feeling I plug straight into when I come back out of it. Somebody's gonna give you a lesson in leaving. Somebody's gonna give you back what you've been given. And I hope that I'm around. For CMA Horizon Award winner Jody Messina, a night around the Opry can change you from entertainer to something else. I'm the biggest... Bad. I mean, people are like, so what's it like backstage? They're like, for me, I want to bring my camera and my autograph book. And <laughs> when you live in the country, everybody is your neighbor. All this one thing you can rely on. And last Saturday night was the perfect night to have your autograph book handy as the all-star cast took to the Opry stage for a rousing rendition of the Porter Wagoner classic, Y'all Come. A highlight of this Opry family sing-along was when the cast was joined on stage by bashful brother Oswald, still in recovery from a fall. Of the 74 Opry birthday celebrations, Oz has helped blow out the candles on the cake 60 times. For these people standing on this stage, the Grand Ole Opry isn't a physical building building you go to on the weekends to perform your country music. It's a place you carry with you everywhere you go because you carry it in your heart. Well, it means everything that I've always loved about country music. This is what turned me on to country music. This is my first taste of country music. And what I thought country music was always going to be about was the Grand Ole Opry. It's always good to know that there's that, that place you can go every Friday and Saturday night and still play great country music. For 74 years, that's exactly what the Grand Ole Opry has been to country music. It's been home, and it's been a good home. Good as I was to you. I don't know how I always managed to be out of town during the Opry birthday celebration, but that Jan was... Howard, it looked like it was fun. You got a kiss from Port Wagner. I know. How about that? <laughs> I hate to say, but I, I did wash my face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, you know. How many years have you been nice. on the Opry? Uh, member for 20, what did I say, 27 years. Mm -hmm. But I appeared here 11 years before that. They didn't know I wasn't a member. <laughs> you just kept I, showing up. <laughs> I auditioned for 11 years. What can I say? I mentioned Lefty Frizzell a while ago in the big Lefty Day we're going to have. You used to live in California when Lefty mm. lived out there. Did you know him well? Were y'all I didn't know him well, but uh, we went to his home one day, and I was so in awe of Lefty Frizzell because I loved his music that I don't remember saying anything. I don't, I don't know that I said anything. <laughs> I know those were the days when you sat around and picked and sang, and I, I think I just listened. But um, we moved to Nashville, and then later on, he moved to Nashville. Uh -huh. And uh, I know he recorded a Harlan Howard song, She's Gone, Gone, Gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah one of his big, big hits. Yeah. So we're going to have that big Lefty Frizzell day down there tomorrow. I'm That's looking great. forward to that. Oh, I'd like to be there. such a great, great country stylist. Well, you're doing a big thing in Texas yourself. You're going down for Mo Bandy's uh, oh, golf Mo tournament. Oh, Mo Bandy's golf yeah. tournament. Yeah, and it benefits the uh, Children's Transplant Program. And it's, it's very rewarding because every year they have some of the children that have benefited from the tournament that have actually received transplants there and it's it's really you know heart touches your heart we tease you a lot because you play golf so much but you really do a lot for charity i mean a lot of these events do raise money for very well, charitable causes I, I enjoy doing it and uh, you know it doesn't cost anything it, you know you give back a little bit i i enjoy doing it you're going to do something pretty big in nashville on veterans day on veterans day i've been honored to um to be the co-grand marshal and that means 
that they are especially honoring the women veterans this year. Oh. And uh, so the, I, I called uh, uh, John Fergus with the veterans organization the other day, and I said, if I'm co who is Grand Marshal? And he <laughs> said, you are. Co just means that they're honoring the women veterans. and. and uh, well, you've been very so active in, in veterans affairs and all oh, yeah. for, uh, for many, many years. Uh, one time I did, I was co-grand marshal, and uh, I went all the way down, you know, on the convertible bit, down to the end of the parade, and then was coming back, and I saw the Vietnam veterans, they were walking down. So I jumped off the thing and walked back down with them. I said I belonged wow. with them. Good for you. Yeah. That's terrific. Well, you, yeah. you do a lot of good things like that, and I think that's terrific. Oh, what are you going to sing on the opera tonight? I'm going to do um, Take Me As I Am or Let Me Go, Great written by Felice and Boodle O'Brien, two of my favorite writers. And you sing it so well. Always good Thank to you. see you, my friend. Miss Jan too. Howard, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up next on Opry Backstage, a young lady that says she's living out the cowgirl's dream, Joni Harms. Isn't I she terrific? Well, she she's wonderful. Me. She'll be here when we come back. Stay with us. I've heard two Grand Ole Opry stars say tonight that Joni Harms is absolutely an incredible singer. And I, I vouch for that because I've heard you sing, but Porter Wagner and Jan Howard have both been just bragging on you something fierce tonight. Good to have you at the opera. Well, thank you. And boy, I can't think of any two people that would mean more to me to hear say something like that. So thank you, guys. Now, you're a real Western girl from Oregon. You live on a ranch. You grow Christmas trees, I hear. Well, I got Christmas trees <laughs> and some cattle and horses. And yeah, it's just a wonderful place to be. My great grandfather homesteaded the place in 1872 and so it just feels like home but I sure love to come to Nashville too and I'm so honored to be here tonight well, we're glad to have you this is your new CD which is called uh, <laughs> tell me the very time. appropriately <laughs> cowgirl dreams yes yeah now do you sing being from the West and, and growing up and living on a ranch and all this do you sing real Western music or how do you describe your music well I don't think it's as Western as maybe say what they call Western artists I try to put a lot of the 90s into it but what I write and sing about is what I know and what I grew up um, being around and I just uh, love to sing positive music that maybe can make somebody's day a little bit brighter that makes me feel good if I can do that before you were a singer, you were a, a rodeo queen. That's correct. I wore several titles. I did. Uh, it was great because I could um, sing as well as make my appearance as a rodeo queen. I was Miss Northwest Rodeo and oh. um, uh, Miss uh, Molala Buckaroo and lots of different ones out there. Did so. you ride in the rodeo? Absolutely. That yeah. was about the only thing I think different from some of the other pageants is that you certainly had to be able to ride a horse. Yes. People compare you sometimes and say that you're kind of a female George Strait. Uh, well, that's a big compliment as well. About, why do they say that? I mean, what, what is it? Well, I think, uh, you know, a lot of times I'll wear a cowboy hat and I um, ride and uh, really like that traditional country music. And that's, you know, a lot of the type of music he does is, is uh, what I do, only female style, I'd say. You were talking back in the makeup room uh, a little earlier tonight. You say that said something about females have have a little tougher time. You think than the males do in the in the music. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. I just think right now it's very tough because I do sing such traditional country music. I think it's real tough to get on radio. Um, but I'm not going to change my music for that because I have enough wonderful fans out there that really like the traditional music and uh, what I'm doing. And so I'm going to stay doing what I do. Um, for them and whoever will listen to it. That's wonderful, and I'm glad you're doing it at the Grand Ole Opry tonight. Joni Harms, she'll be coming up here at the bottom of the hour. Porter Wagner's hosting Opry Live tonight. Paul Brandt's going to be here. Jim Lauderdale and Dr. Ralph Stanley. Jan Howard and Joni Harms. What a great show. See you next week on Opry Backstage. I'm Bill Anderson. Good night.